all right, let's do a, a kind of summary of the price action, some charts, take a look at things. I'll try and keep things relatively condensed. I like to speak quickly, probably won't need 2x speed for this one. And we'll do a summary of BTC, ETH, some other select alts, and then a little run over of the, the stock market. Things are pretty shit at the moment in terms of uh, a crypto perspective. Uh, it very much has that feeling that that I get, which is the market looks so fucking atrocious that it probably pumps. That's that's like the counter logic that is very often correct because everything looks so nailed on to visit downside and lower prices that this is probably a bottom. That's like that's the way I'm considering it right now. BTC lower time frame has been selling off pretty, not aggressively, like controlled selling, consolidations, breakdowns, consolidations, breakdowns. But we've now just tapped into kind of one of the more significant regions that we have up here in 28,500. This is one of the better zones for BTC. It's an area that's seen support and resistance previously and for quite extended periods of time. So we can see over here back in 2022 in the May, June, we had a good month of price action being supported by this 28,500. And in this region here in March, April 2023, we had a good period of resistance through this zone again, basically a month trapped underneath this level. So this is a good area for BTC. And then on the lower time frames, we can see today that we've had the sweep of all of the lows into this zone, very strong reaction, and probably going to squeeze some of the shorts that have piled into any potential breakdown through this zone here. I like BTC here because it gives a very clean risk reward zone in terms of being a buyer here. I think that it makes, you know, kind of the most sense to hop into a position through this region because you you you're operating very close to that significant higher time frame level. So of all the times it's kind of <clears throat> been a bid opportunity for BTC, which has been relatively limited in recent times, I think that this is actually one of the better zones just because it's a tighter stop loss realistically for, for where we are over here. So, you know, you see on the four hour through of this area, consolidation at 29.7, breakdown here on Monday, consolidation then between these two levels at 29.5 and 29.1, breakdown again today. And hopefully now we start to see a recovery or at least some signs of fucking life for BTC through this zone. Now what's happening is this classic thing where more and more people start talking about volatility. They start talking about a big move coming because historically we're at volatility lows and we've been trapped inside this consolidation. For a lot of you, you may consider this as just a big higher time frame consolidation range and I probably wouldn't disagree with you. Um, and we've kind of been trapped here without anything significant in terms of a trending move for a while now. And the longer that goes on and the more information you absorb about kind of volatility being at all time lows or again, historical lows or regions that we expect big moves to develop from, we start to get into this mindset of anticipating the big move, anticipating the major move on BTC. And unfortunately what's probably happened to a lot of people during this range is you've been chopped to pieces anyway trading this range or anticipating that it continues in its trending structure and when it doesn't you're stopped out of your positions and that's happened time and time again and once this range starts to kind of expand in terms of length of time and that volatility keeps dropping and the anticipation grows it leads to basically overactivity again on the trading side of things. So a lot of people around these extremes will now start over trading again because the range has been going on a long time. We're anticipating that big move. You don't want to miss out on the big move. So you enter more positions more frequently. And unfortunately, the market also tends to punish that side of things. So <clears throat> even the breakdown today or the supposed breakdown today or the sweeping of the lows is going to entice a lot of people into kind of shorting into that because they're anticipating this big move. So you see BTC drop a couple of hundred dollars and you pile into a short position thinking this is that big volatility breaking trending move that we've all been waiting for for what feels like eternity but is only really you know the best part of a month up here at these at these highs around 30,000. With all of that being said, 
BTC is in a pretty decent position here, I think, for for trying a bid, certainly on the higher time frames. All right, we'll dive over to uh, to ETH and take a look there. So ETH didn't manage to get the sweep in when it took this last move down. It's just stayed inside this cluster that we're seeing at the moment. No divergences on the lower time frame in order for me to get involved with. However, there are some other markets with some lower time frame divergences that are probably worthy of of taking a look into if you're if you're trading down on the lower time frames through this region. And the RSI and the 12-hour uh, RSI and the daily RSI look in pretty fucking poor shape for ETH. If we take a look at this, you know, this is a classic RSI 50 rejection point and looks as though we're getting ready to start a move lower. Kind of combine that with the way that we look as though we're on the edge of the cliff right now. So it either supports the point that I made right at the beginning of this video where I said everything looks so shit that we have to pump. Uh, or we really are going to shit the bed uh, relatively soon, I would imagine. Certainly within the next seven days, this is probably going to take a tumble to the downside. If we manage to save from here, then I think everybody will start mapping in the last low of this region here around the, the 1812s. They'll start talking about a sweep of that level and then hopefully movement back to the upside. <clears throat> now, you know, I'm a, I'm a crypto bull. I'm a traditional market bull. I want to see the market go higher, uh, but I'm also a realist in terms of the way that the crypto landscape has looked over the last 48 hours hasn't been particularly pleasing. Now, we have got a situation that right now it seems relatively limited and contained to DeFi. And so we've started to see some of the DeFi coins really struggle in recent times. Obviously, we all know about the drama that's going on in the background there. But really, I think the market overreacted at the weekend to that news, kind of, you know, market wide had some overreaction. And it would be a nice opportunity to try and squeeze some of the shorts. And from my perspective, it would be a nice opportunity just to trade into higher prices, you know, in line with the trend that we're seeing more specifically on BTC. I think Sol is also worthy of a look as well. Sol has been a, a great market in terms of the bounces it's put in. And I spoke about this kind of being a a market that should see a reaction down towards this 22 level i think this is a zone that we should see some you know some support at and some willingness for buyers to step in through this zone the weekly is actually in pretty good shape i think that the fact we've made a higher high here we've got our higher low means that the market structure is actually in a really good position for Seoul here we've got our highs got our higher low and we've got our fresh higher high. So we've actually got this uptrending market structure. So that's a good sign for, for Sol bulls here. And all we're doing now is, is correcting on the back of what was an incredibly strong move for Sol uh, over this period of time here in the, in the middle of June and into July. So I think that's really what we're doing here. And now you want to be able to see Sol make that move and make that push back to the upside. I would love to see the daily hold on today, maybe try and close this a little bit higher and just lock in this 50 bounce and then try and push to the upside. We're not going to be too disappointed if it closes at like 47. That's not that's not make or break. It's in and around this 50 level that's important in terms of getting the bounce. But for me, any close here and you know, some strength elsewhere, especially if BTC gets that reaction from 28.5 and we start to see a push back to the upside, this is still one of the better markets for me in order to be positioned long on. And then the other market, which is more of a higher time frame play and a higher time frame thought process is APE. Now, APE is one of the first markets, and I've covered this before, one of the first markets with a three-day bull div. There's not many of these that exist. I think BNB is the only other one in the crypto space that has it. And this has basically been the exact play that I've been taking on stocks for the last three months is playing into shit that looks like this and then playing into the bounces. So APE is one of the first markets that's putting in this three-day divergence. We've got the close of the three-day in eight hours' time. I would suspect that we're going to close at this fresh low. I don't think that we're going to close above the 192s in that time. That would certainly be a huge market turnaround. Um, and it means that we're going to be locking in this triple divergence down here. Well, <clears throat> I say locking in. It's not actually locking in. We're probably at least 6, 9, 12 days away from knowing or at least having further belief or confirmation that this is going to be a three-day triple divergence. And we need that length of time to pass and consolidate at this level. 
if Ape chooses to start trading higher within the next three days, great, that's fine. That also does the job as well. But typically, these divergences hold at these lows. We develop some sort of lower time frame change of structure, and then we can begin to accelerate and move back to the upside. So this is one of the markets from a higher time frame swing perspective I'm interested in. It's a piece of shit. I have no idea why it would go up. I don't know what the catalyst is for this to go up. I don't know why this would perform in the face of everything else that we're seeing. However, from a TA perspective, and just simply a TA perspective, this has one of the better higher time frame signals that I have uh, according to my system across the markets right now. And then we'll go over to the traditional side of things and just take a look at, at how things are shaping up here. So the indexes, is, from my perspective, are starting to look tired here. I think we're starting to starting to feel like we are getting to the tail end of this move with one giant caveat that this is a raging bull market right now and you know kind of the downside anticipation and those people who have been anticipating the downside for a long period of time have been regularly disappointed so i've ended up hedging the long position that i've got from from down here just through this region because i think we're in that relatively sticky patch currently and i would like to uh, i would like to kind of just be hedged up to see through this zone the three day is really the most concerning child that we've got here. So the divergence looks as though it may transfer into this final leg here. So this small divergence between these two highs. However, the daily is in a position where this can easily break upwards and start heading higher. We're 6% off all time highs now on the NASDAQ and SPX is around 3.5% off the all time highs. So we're, we're we're pretty fucking close compared to the year that people thought the indexes were going to have. Uh, in 2023. Some signs of exhaustion, but again, the caveat that this is a very strong uptrending market and therefore we've got to be very careful in shorting into this, still very much more favored in terms of buying into any dips versus trying to sell into this. And and same picture on SPX here, there's exactly the same picture. We're just seeing that divergence and especially this last leg of the divergence here, if it decides or if it closes red and we start to have a red day tomorrow, potentially, then we've got this triple divergence here on the daily for SPX, which again would lead us into more downside, maybe towards the 4450s. I think that's probably a sensible zone. A lot of stocks correcting today. Metals having a poor day, and it was a pretty good day for metals yesterday, but a poor reaction today. And individually, some stocks correcting more heavily than others, some stocks showing some signs of life still and as though they may weather this uh, little patch that we've got. We can see that AMD, there's earnings tonight and this chart looks absolutely primed. I tweeted about this earlier. This chart looks like if this was just any other week that didn't have the setup on the indexes that's currently there, then I would go balls deep long on this. This setup looks so, so good. And with earnings tonight, it's like a gamble play. You know, I could play into the gamble side of this and and just take some calls and say whatever happens, happens. I mean, realistically, that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I've got to flip the coin on this. So that's what I'll probably end up doing is just taking some, some calls into this because the setup, TA-wise, looks great. It looks like it's going to impulse higher. It looks like it's going to break clear of this consolidation. And uh, and therefore, I'll just take a little bit of, of degen coin flip exposure into that. So individually, some stocks in here are doing pretty well. As a whole, that uh, that market kind of the indexes look as though we're going to see a bigger correction through here. And I think, again, we're kind of reaching the tail end of that with that caveat once again for the third time that they are in raging bull markets. And if you're shorting into them, you have to be very careful in doing so because they can just rip higher and that's it. And with, you know, very, very kind of small distances now to all time highs, we just got to be kind of careful around doing that because the moves can get quite aggressive and volatile towards those ending points. So just worthwhile if you are a bear on the indexes. And I don't think there's anything really wrong with that now as long as you've only just become a bear on them and you haven't missed out on a ton of value on the way up. I don't think this is a bad point, bad point to be at least a little bit more cautious about the indexes and what they're doing through this region. So that's the full summary. 
There's as many markets as I can cram into 15 minutes, along with speeding up my voice as much as possible to not drive everybody crazy. Have a good week. See you soon.